Too many times kids sit on the outside. They don't play the game. They don't get involved. They don't do it because some bully has told them that loser is a bad thing. Loser is something you do when you try. You play the game. everybody, this week on Strapping In, we're in Lewiston, Idaho for the roundup. They call it the She's Wild Rodeo. We're going to get started right here at the Clearwater River Casino and Lodge. Incredible place to stay. Got a big day planned. We do. I'm especially excited to go out to the Diamondback Shooting Range and shoot a 22. Learn a little bit about gun safety. On top of that, I'm going to get JJ to kick off his boots, and we're going to head over to the salon for a spa pedicure. Yeah, I don't know about that, but I do, for, I do know for sure we're going to head down. We've got a school assembly planned at Camelot Elementary School. We're going to go talk to some kids. It's going to be a great time. I don't know about you, JJ, but I'm ready to rock and roll. range safety officer here at the shooting range. Tell me a little bit about your title and how you help the community with gun safety. Okay, our main goal here at first is, is to provide a safe shooting place for people to come and shoot. Our range is 25 yards long. They can fire their own firearms here or they can rent ours. People need to be familiar with that firearm. You know, how to, how to hold it, grip, stance, side acquisition, and all that. All the safety features of the gun. Uh, the biggest thing I see is people do what I call go to the trigger. You hand them a gun, their finger goes on the trigger. No, your index finger should always be out straight, never on the on the trigger. And that's things that we stress here. We have range rules that they have to read and sign so they know what is safe out there. Our shooting lanes are all steel and gravel lined so that once they get in that shooting station, there is no way they can get hurt by somebody on either side of them. A bullet cannot pass through the barriers. We do gun safety classes here. We do an NRA course called Basic Pistol, and that goes over, they talk about the different types of firearms, whether it's revolver, single action, double action, semi-auto. We also do a women's self-defense class here, and the women's self-defense class teaches them more about being aware of their surroundings, what to look for, what to watch out for, what to be aware of, and it deals again there in, in safety, and they also talk about gun selection for them. And then take them out on the range and have them shoot and help coach them out there. Well, I think that's great, Gary. I think the women's self-defense class is awesome. And you know, it's so important. I travel all over the United States and to be able to have that right to protect myself is so important. And so I am so excited to get started with you today to see what you have to show me and hopefully I can learn a few tips from you. Okay. Never leave this shooting station with a firearm in your hand, okay? It always stays facing downrange. Tell me when to stop. I don't know. <laughs> hey, should I shoot? Yeah. Kind of fun. That's like a strong gun. <laughs> 
Oh. He's here with your first three shots with this guy. Oh, that's After good. After that, you got scared. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I could get a little wild with me. A gun. <laughs> Watch out, world. I'm protected. excited because I was able to catch up with Anthony Thomas and Anthony came all the way from Australia to be here rodeoing in the United States. Tell me a little bit about what it takes to get here to rodeo in the United States and also I mean I'm sure you rodeo in Australia as well. How do you balance your rodeo schedule? Um, yeah it takes a lot of paperwork and money with visas and stuff to be allowed to ride here and have a professional career. Uh, you know, it's something that you have to keep putting money into for as long as you want to stay here. And uh, as far as a rodeo career, I live over here full time now as long as my visas p permit me to. And um, I just rodeo when I go back to visit family and stuff. So you have family in Australia, and I'm sure they're a huge support for you, but they're so many miles away. And so where do you find your support along the road? I mean, that's got to be difficult since you come from a very long ways away. Yeah, just my friends and, you know, rodeo family that I've met over here through the years. Everyone's really supportive, even the competitors that you ride against. It's the best thing about rodeo is everybody's, you know, really supportive and positive. Tell me a little bit about uh, when you get on the back of a bareback horse and tell me about that feeling. That's That's got to be tough. Uh, I don't know about tough. It's kind of an, an addiction. I've been doing it for so long. It's You definitely have every bit of your adrenaline running and um, I try to stay really calm and focused and, you know, because the horses at this level, they know their job as well and some of them get wild in the shoots and want to hurt you in there so I try to stay as calm as I can be and be a horseman in the bucking shoots and try to get out as fast and as clean as I can and get the best shot so I can win, you know. Okay, well there you have it. We're strapping in with Anthony Thomas. Coming up, what do you spend your money on, man? Booze and girls. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding.
everybody, you strapped in. We're in Lewiston, Idaho at the Casa of JJ. We've uh, strangled down two incredible bull riders to talk to them. How'd it work out? Uh, I was seven something on both of them. Um, last night I had a really good bull. Tonight I had about as shitty a bull as you could get. So, and just just to clarify, you still have to ride for eight seconds. Yeah, still got to go for eight seconds. But uh, from one good one that I messed up, and then tonight the other extreme, you know, you waste a good one, I guess you deserve a bad one. Got to be the top 15 to make the Wrangler National Finals come December time. Yeah, and that's the main goal right now is to make it there and have a good finals, make a lot of money. What do you do with the money you make? Now, you brought up a good point. Now, I promise I'll get back to this, but you want to make a lot of money. What do you spend your money on, man? Booze and girls. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, I usually save pretty much all my money right now. Right now, I'm just trying to build it up to where I can actually start buying maybe it's some land or a house in a few years, so just trying to stash it up. Garrett, how has your year been this year so far? This year's actually been pretty incredible. I've had, honestly, the best year I've ever had, and it's it's been awesome. I mean, I've had good people to travel with, and now going with Tim, I have somebody that really wants to go hard and, and pushes you and, and rides really good, so it's just been incredible. You guys, I know, have so much fun out on the road together. I high school rodeoed with you guys when we were a little bit younger, and I got a little taste of what it was like back then, so I can only imagine what it's like now. Do you have any stories on Tim over here? I mean, what is he doing out on the road? Tell us something here. Well, I don't know if we can tell it all on camera, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> no, there's, there's dang sure been some good times, but uh, we kind of just started about two, three weeks ago. So, I mean, we haven't had that many stories, but I'm sure if we both make Vegas, then, then there'll be some stories. But I just don't ever want to get out of rodeo when I'm done. It's all we've done over our lives, and I just love it. The magic happens here. It's JJ, JJ, I gotta say, okay, you guys, this is girl time. We have a little bit of excitement that happened just last week, and Kaylee, Riker's new, do you want to say the word? Fiance. <laughs> Anyways, he said, well, I've got your birthday present behind my back. And I was just like, okay, then give it to me. <laughs> kind of with an attitude behind it. Yeah. And so Riker, being Riker and being a bull rider, just walks up to me, hands me this box and says, okay, here you go. And I opened it and it's this ring. And he said, so you want to get married? Like, didn't get on a knee. So, oh so you want to get married? That's what you said? She's out there, and she sees me on rodeo, and she gets excited. She's happy when I'm doing good and doing what I love. How old are you? 20. 20 years old. Now, are you rodeoing with a group of guys, or are you just kind of a, with your pace, there's not many guys that are really doing what you're doing um, I mean, are you basically rodeoing by yourself right now? Uh, right now, yeah. Throughout the summer, I was able to go with a, a couple of guys like Roscoe, Jarbo, and, and uh, but yeah, right now it's just kind of all going by myself because those guys are going to go to uh, Puyallup and, and uh, some rodeos closer here. But I think the biggest thing is, is that, I mean, you know, at this at this level, I think everybody knows they already have the basics of bull riding down. They, they all ride great, you know, so. Uh, you know, it's, it's eight seconds of, of bull riding, so if you can get in there and, and clear your mind and not think, oh, I haven't slept in, you know, two days or I haven't eaten the best or whatever and just uh, kind of block it all out and, and let your body do what it's meant to do, you know, everything should work out. Coming up next, mom, dad, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a cowgirl because I don't like cows. I'm a horse girl because I like horses. <laughs>
That's right, you're strapping in. On this, are you ready? Okay. What else do you want me to, oh, the hot dog thing. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about that, JJ. <laughs> How's the shot? Oh. <laughs> We are here at the Clearwater River Casino and Lodge, and we have Jason here. He is the marketing director here at the lodge. Tell me a little bit about your duties as the marketing director here. So I'm responsible for, you know, creating promotions for this casino as well as another casino we have about 60 miles away, as well as providing the concert entertainment um, for the property. I love the rooms. They are so spacious. There's room for all my suitcases and packing everything in. And that's a lot of suitcases. So. <laughs> What's neat is these rodeo communities that we go to, and I call it a rodeo community. That's why we're here at Lewis and Roundup. But a lot of times people will come to the community and then they'll find a place to stay. And you've changed that. Now you're a destination. You're making people want to come to the Clearwater River Lodge and then they'll find things to do in town. You know, we, we have a lot of hotels in Lewiston, but this is a great, just a good place to relax. You know, gamble if you want. You know, we have everything here. We have a hotel, we have food. If you want to gamble, we have shows. So it's a kind of a one-stop shop here. Now, have you seen with the Lewiston Roundup Rodeo in town, have you seen more cowboys staying out here? Oh, absolutely. You know, we have our, you know, hotel as well as, our, you know, our RV park. So we get quite a few of those, of those folks here. That's awesome. I tell you what, you strapped in, but when you're coming through Lewiston, there's only one place to stay, isn't there? Absolutely. Clearwater Casino Lodge. Okay, so here we are. We're down at the Signature Salon right here in Lewiston, Idaho, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's the manicures, pedicures, haircuts. All they did was take one look at this, and they told me, JJ, you're getting a haircut. Let's get it on, strap in. That is a stick in my nose right now. <laughs> ah, mama, <laughs> It's recap time, so Amanda has washed, blow dried, and then she did this crazy thing where she stuck some sticks in my nose and yanked out two gerbils that I did not know were living in there. Uh, all in all, Signature Salon's been a fun day. Right when I walked in and saw you, I was like, oh wow, this girl's special. Like just right from the beginning, um, you know, you have your own style going and you're your own person. And it's just, you see that just from the, you know, the look in your eye, you have that about you. Uh, so how did you get your start in rodeo? Um, so ever since I was little, I think it started about when I was three years old, um, and I would just beg my parents for a horse. And in fact, I said, Mom, Dad, I'm not <laughs> I'm not a cowgirl because I don't like cows. I'm a horse girl because I like horses. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so um, I just always love them. And so about 10 years later for my 13th birthday, we moved to the country, and my parents got me my first horse. Them not really being horse people, they bought a three-year-old. <laughs> Well, thankfully, I'm very blessed to have super supportive parents, even though they didn't really have a clue and sometimes still don't what's going on with horses and stuff. They were always very supportive. So um, once we kind of started down that path, they made sure that I had what I needed. And, you know, then they found out good horses versus not so good horses. Right. And it's just been a huge learning experience for all of us. And I think they've enjoyed kind of that unique twist that I bring to the family. But you told me that you're out on your own on the road, which is unique. You're a barrel racer. You said you have four horses that you're traveling with. That is so much responsibility. Uh, tell me why, you're why you chose to be out on your own. 
It was a little over a year ago, um, my, the love of my life um, passed away. And, you know, we had, we had said so many times like, oh, we're gonna plan to do this later. We're gonna plan to do that later. And, you know, after he passed, I just had this awakening where like, we're not always guaranteed tomorrow. Right. So I've always wanted to be a pro rodeo cowgirl. And I thought I'm not gonna put it off anymore. So I right. sold my business and um, I wanted to be a gypsy full time. Um, in today's world, we get caught up in the status quo and, you know, work in jobs that we don't like and doing things that we wouldn't necessarily choose to do if we didn't have to. And after my boyfriend passed that, you know, that was a huge thing that came through is just life's too short. Pond five. I'm so glad that we had you here at the salon today and had a chance to get to know you a little bit better. And I know you are gonna do amazing things out there and inspire a lot of people. Thank you so much. We are here with a two-time turquoise circuit champion bull rider, Lon Danley. And from what I understand, you've been to a lot of rodeos this year. Tell me a little bit about the rodeos you've been to and how many you've been to this year and your reasoning behind that. Yes, ma'am. I started the 1st of October and just entered everything I could. And I've been to almost 120 of them this year so far and planning on going to about 30 more. And, uh, you know, I just, I don't like to be at home working. And uh, as long as I can win enough money to be out here, well, that's where I'm going to be. What is it that drives you to all of these rodeos? I mean, that's insane to go to that many rodeos in one year. Well, there's, you know, there's people that it, that it kill to be out here doing what we're doing. And, you know, you have a chance to do it. You might as well take advantage of it rather than, you know, letting it get by you. So that's uh, what my plan is, is just use my abilities to the best, I guess. Man, why don't we just call it what it is? It's called fear of a day job, okay? That's what it really is, brother. Tell me a story where you have tormented your buddies. Give me something. Well, I think they torment me, and I just don't really take it, you know. I, I just kind of give it right back to them. Uh, we were driving down the road today, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of going bald a little bit, so I had a, was taking a Snapchat of my bald head, and uh, old Dallin was sitting over there, and uh, he just starts laughing. And he says, what are you doing? And uh, I looked at him, I told him, you're going to have to shut up because you're messing up my facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. Listen, when a man's trying to be a supermodel, stay out of his business. What's next on the radar for you? Where do you go from here? I mean, is, it, is the Rango National Finals the ultimate goal for you? Yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, I really don't think there's any reason I can't go. You're going to be at the National Finals this year, and we're going to come and watch you. Thank you, sir. Coming up on Strapping In. Please welcome TV host and TV star, my friend, Tacey Schaefer!
You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Pond five. To me, loser says this. Hey, man, I tried. I put my heart into something. I wanted to win, but I didn't, but I tried. Too many times, kids sit on the outside. They don't play the game. They don't get involved. They don't do it because some bully has told them that loser is a bad thing. Loser is something you do when you try. You play the game. Please welcome TV host and TV star, my friend, Tacey Schaefer. When I was a little girl about your guys' age, I wanted to be a rodeo queen. And from that point on, I continue to ride horses and work on my horsemanship skills and work on my public speaking skills. But guess what? I didn't win. I was first runner up in the competition. My idea was that if you shoot for the moon, then you'll land on a star. So go for the highest and biggest goals and dreams that you have, and you will most definitely land on a star. Hi, JJ and Casey were awesome today. JJ really has a way with kids that helps to keep them on task. And Tacey was a great role model to really talk to kids about how you can not always win, but still be successful in life. So I'm sure they love seeing both of them, and we look forward to having them back. Pond Five.